Cindy. It's Cindy, the scrapologist. I decided to do a live video today. I haven't done one in a long, long time. So I didn't make any announcement or anything that I was going live. Hopefully those of you that clicked subscribe got the notice and can join me. So today, first of all, I hope my microphone, whoops. I hope my microphone is not crackly. For some reason, when I go live on YouTube, my microphone is not as clear as when I don't go live, which is one of the reasons why I haven't gone live in a while, because I was having problems with that. So as people jump on, I'm going to continue to ask how the, how the sound is. But what I'm doing today is I finally got a hold of some wallpaper books. They're really hard to get a hold of now um, because people, so many people know about them now because of the internet and YouTube and everything. Uh, back in the 80s when I first started crafting with wallpaper, the paint stores and other places, uh, hardware stores and whatnot, couldn't give these away. And, and I had way too many. Well, now... These wallpaper books, I've been waiting probably three months at our local Sherwin-Williams. They have been giving them to other people, which is fine, who go in and, and want them. But I guess it was my turn. So I got a call out of the blue that they had some wallpaper books for me, and I was super excited. So I want to work with these because I have run out of wallpaper. And actually, I haven't used wallpaper in a while. So I just want to show you some ideas that I have. I'm sure, hold on, I'm getting an error message on YouTube here. Uh, okay, hopefully that didn't do anything. But um, where was I? So yeah, I'm sure that none of these ideas are original. I didn't go on YouTube or Pinterest or anything and look up wallpaper stuff. I just want to see what I come up with today. I have been playing with the wallpaper a little bit. Um, now, this is kind of embarrassing, but I'm going to show this to you. This is a card that I made back in the 80s. This is just to give you an idea of some, you know, some things that you can do with wallpaper. If you are a card maker, then this is a card, you know, back in the 80s, stamping was huge. We all had those Marvy markers and we'd stamp and emboss and then color in. It was really a lot of fun. So, but this back piece here, this back frame is wallpaper. And then I just stamped, I still even have a stamp. It says, you're a treasure when I'm happy, a comfort when I'm blue. There is no better friend in all the world than you. <laughs> um, so then I just stamped on white paper, colored this and put it on top. And I've just got some frames here. So that's, you can really use wallpaper very easily in card making. And the reason why I still have this card from the 80s, not because I particularly like it, because I'm kind of embarrassed at how it looks now, <laughs> that, I, that I've sort of moved on and progressed as an artist a little bit, um, is that whenever I make a card, I make two. So one to give, well, I make a minimum of two, because sometimes I make more than that, but one to give, and I always keep one in my stash. I have a big box like this that you're probably not going to be able to see very easily, but it's just a big box. And then I have one of each of the cards that I've made. Hi, Ellen Gerlock. <laughs> I'm glad you figured out how to get on. I know I miss stamping. I'm going to have to go do more of that. So anyway, so I have... I have one of each of my cards so I can go back and remember what I made. And the other thing you could do, th these were made with scrapbook paper, but you could totally do a color block. I think that's what you call that card like this, where you just take um, rectangular cutouts of the wallpaper and just put them in blocks like this and put them on the front of your card because quite often the wallpaper books are color coordinated. So it makes it really easy to do something like this. Um, so I got, I wanted to show you, 
what I do when I get a wallpaper book. I these are really bound very sturdily. So my husband has to take these apart for me. And I always keep the leather strap if there's a leather strap on there because these are great for closures for for junk journals and mini albums. So I keep that. And then I take out all of the inner pages and let me just, I just have a few samples here. And then I, I take them all out and put them in a nice pile. And I try to leave them in order so that they're co color coordinated. But for me, it's just easier to store than storing these big giant books. I did see a video one time, and I wish I could remember who it was. Um, and it was a really cool idea, but I just don't want to, I just don't want to um, have, take up the space with this, but they took a wallpaper book and then added a chipboard side and bottom. And then it sat upright like this. I don't have a lot of room here. And they used it for storage and put stuff in here. So I think that's a cool idea. But other, otherwise, I just throw these away because they're, they're too thick to use for mini album covers, usually. And it's just bulky. It's easier for me to just store the paper. So this one I'm really excited about because it's every one of these can be used as a journal cover. And you see how they're coordinated. How beautiful. I mean, this would make just such a gorgeous junk journal cover. Look at that. And wallpaper also is three-dimensional and has texture to it. So it's really fun to work with. The other book I got was um, Seascapes, which I'm not really thrilled about, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to um, be ungrateful. I, I'm sure that eventually I'll maybe want to use the papers that are in there, but it's not really my style. Like seahorses and, and periwinkle blue and stuff like that. But who knows? Sometimes I hang on to things and then years later I change my what I'm in the mood for and I might use it. I never throw anything away. This one I'm super excited about because these are smaller pages. They're about, oh, let's see, 10 and a half by five and a half. And what I can totally use these for is to cover my spines with. This is a, a faux cork. This one is called Grass Cloth Collection. So it's a lot of um, organic looking materials. There's, there's some bamboos in here and different kinds of, um, there's another cork different kinds of grasses, I think, are on this side. So what I can do, I don't, I don't think I can really pull one out. I'd have to cut it with my X-Acto knife. But what I can do for this is take it and put it over the spine of an album. And this one I used muslin cloth and I tea stained it, but I could totally put it, oh, use it for the spine cover on, on a junk journal and, or an album, and it's going to look beautiful. If you follow me, you know that I do not like to use just scrapbook paper on the spines because after a while, it feathers and tears. It's not designed for the book to be constantly open and closed and open and closed, or if you leave it sit there a while and you go to open it, it's going to crack. So I do not believe in books that I'm selling that there should be um, scrapbook paper on the spine. I just don't think it's durable enough. So I'm really excited about these. Fun, fun, fun. So anyway, I still have to take these two books apart. And there's a couple of things that I've already started working on. This, if you just want to make something quick, this is a piece of wallpaper, and I think it's really pretty. It's two-dimensional. It's got, it's debossed here with like a silver, and then there's this cool texture here. It's almost like a rubber. It's really neat. So I cut this out to be, let's see, 
And this would make a quick gift that you could make in literally an hour or under. I cut this out to be uh, 10 and 3 quarters by 7 and 3 quarters. And then I did round the corners. So the corner chomper will work on wallpaper. And then I just folded it in half and put a crease in it. Well, first, I take that back. First, I covered the inside with scrapbook paper. And I thought this looked really pretty with it. And inked the edges with my Tim Holtz. And for the scrapbook paper, I did use my score tape because I just really do not like working with glue. Glue hates me and it tries to go all over me and it's too messy. <laughs> but I also think that the score tape is longer lasting than glue. So I did affix this with score tape, but you can use glue, whatever adhesive you want. You can even use heat and bond, whatever you want. And then I just folded it in half, creased it with my bone folder, and then you can take some just plain tea stained paper or even scrapbook paper, whatever you have, stick it inside. You can either staple it or you can sew a signature in one signature in here like you would a junk journal. And there's just a really quick, and it's nice because it's a little soft cover. It feels really nice in your hand. You could, like I said, you could whip one of these out. You could whip a bunch of these out in an hour. And there you have a bunch of really nice, nice gifts. Uh, I also experimented with my, whatchamajigger, um, what you, what's the name is envelope punch board. And it cut really easily through wallpaper so you could make some little some little envelopes if you wanted i thought this one looked kind of bohemian a lot of people like that style and they're a lot more durable than paper the paper ones you know after a time these are going to feather here and they're going to rip so i thought that these would be kind of nice to make out of wallpaper too and then the last thing I did, which I'm going to do with you here today, is I did a mini album or junk journal cover with wallpaper. Isn't that pretty? It's like a um, it's like a glossy cream color, which I'm sure it looks different on your computer or whatever you're watching on. So these these cream colored flowers are glossy, and then the rest is just matte. But again. I wrapped it around and this is going to last forever. You don't have to worry about opening and closing this and having it feather along here. That's why wallpaper is really nice. And then look at the inside. That's another piece of wallpaper. And isn't that so pretty? My camera's crooked. It's gonna drive me crazy. Here we go. Hold on. Oh, you know what? Everything's backwards on YouTube. I forgot about that too. Hey, Ellen, how is my sound? Is it crackling? Thank you for saying it's pretty. So this here, okay, I'm still crooked. This here is going to go in my shop. And it's going to be another this and that kit. Let me grab one. Hold on. Oh, thank you, Ellen. I'm glad the sound is working out okay. I've shown this before, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I'm selling these this and that kits. And these are, these would make such nice gifts for anybody who's um, crafty because I've already made the cover. It's the cover ready to go. And you've got a nice piece of ribbon that can go on the inside if you want to do a closure with it. And then I give you a whole bunch of goodies a whole bunch of goodies to put inside. 
and there's enough to make an entire journal. I've already folded the, the signatures for you. These are, I give you the papers to go, that's upside down, to go on the front and back if you want. And really all you have to do is assemble it. So these are really selling very well because I think some people get bogged down in trying to, to match things up. And so this, I think that goes in there. So this, the journal, the journal kit is already put together for you and you don't even have to worry about it. Everything goes and you just have fun sewing it and decorating. So that's what the this and that kit is. It's a little bit of this and a little bit of that inside, but it's ready to go for you. So this is going to go in my shop at some point soon. Oops, sorry, I just hit my microphone. And it's going to be um, a this and that kit, and it will probably be flower themed. I'm thinking I'm going to print my flower um, digi kit, digital kit that's in my shop and have it be flower themed, but I love the inside. I I, I think this is gonna be in my shop. <laughs> I'm loving it. <laughs> so I don't know, I'd like to make a mini album out of it too. But yeah, I'll probably end up putting it in my shop. So there's a couple of ideas for you. Now I'm going to make one of these. I'm sure that somebody somewhere has already done it tutorial on this, but I wanted to make one today and I thought, well, I'll just go live and you guys can craft with me or watch along or ask questions or whatever. So um, let me see. I have some papers here. This one I love. This one I'm saving for something special. I don't know what yet, but um, I think this would be pretty ugly on a wall <laughs> as actual wallpaper, but for a craft page, can you see all the little beads? Let me try to move my light. Come on, autofocus. That's the other thing that drives me crazy on, on YouTube is I can't control my camera. There, I think maybe you can see it. These are all thousands of little glass beads. And this is going to make a beautiful album cover, just beautiful. So I can't wait to work with this. And I love this one too, that distressed wood look. So this is probably going to go on the outside of an album or a junk journal too. It's a little glossy, so I will probably, you know, with wallpaper, you can distress it. I can get out my sandpaper and distress it and then put a little bit of ink on it. So that's probably what I'll do because it because of the vintage look, I don't think I want the gloss. But I thought what I'd do, I have these two pieces here that I really like and they go together really well. They're, they're the same pattern basically. So I'm going to make an album cover or junk journal cover out of these two pieces. The, the dilemma will be what's going to go on the outside and what's going to go on the inside. But let's see, these are a little shorter than the previous album I made. So we're not going to be able to use these dimensions. This one, did I already tell you? I don't know, is five and a half by eight and three quarters. So let's see if I wonder if five, well, what's the size of this? Because I love the size of this. And I think this would be the right size. Four and three quarters by seven and a quarter. Pretty sure that would work. Yeah. Let's do that. Four and three quarters by seven and a quarter. Now, one little tip is I have... Let me get it. Here. Oh, and keep your wallpaper scraps too. And then um, use these for, for cards and, and other things. But I have two trimmers. So I have the regular Fiskars trimmer with the 
razor blade kind of thing. This doesn't cut wallpaper very well. It's just not, the blade gets too dull, too fast, and sometimes it tears your wallpaper as you're going down, I noticed. So I'm just using my other trimmer here. This one, I forget what you call it, rotary trimmer that's self-sharpening. And this, this cuts chipboard and everything else. So this is um, doing a much better job with the wallpaper, I noticed, than the, than the other one, if, if you have that option. But you certainly can use the other one if that's all you have. Just be aware that make sure you have a nice sharp blade in there or it's, gonna, it's not going to make a nice clean cut. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut my chipboard. And what did I say? I already forgot. Four and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Four, four and a half by seven and a quarter. This is basically how I make all of my chipboard covers, whether I'm covering with scrapbook paper or fabric or now wallpaper. <clears throat> and I've done other videos on this, so hopefully it's not too boring. But I do purchase heavyweight chipboard. I get mine at Create for Less. I forget what weight this is, but it's almost as thick as bookboard, what you would make a real book out of. And my rotary trimmer cuts through it pretty nicely. I have to use a little a little elbow power, but but you also you don't have to use the thick weight chipboard. I've used this before. This is the cover to a paper pack. And it's still going to be kind of a soft weight journal but it just gives it a little more stability than just something like this, what I showed you earlier. Um, it's just going to be a little more stiff, but not much. So, or don't use chipboard at all, but you don't have to use this heavy weight. Let me put that away. I'm kind of obsessive as putting things away when I'm done with them because I don't work well in a in a messy room. <laughs> I know some people can have stuff all over their craft table and they feel wonderful and not me. It makes me very nervous. Okay, Cindy, I already forgot again. I should write this down. Four and three quarters. Jeez. By seven and a half. No. Seven and a quarter. <laughs> ah! Seven and a quarter. Where is it? Here it is. And I always line it up with the lines on my trimmer because I found scrapbook paper and chipboard is not always a nice straight 90 degree angle. And when you're doing mini albums, especially, even if you're off an eighth of an inch, it can mess you up. So I just always make sure it's all about, you know, if you're going to sell something, make it as perfect as you can. That's my philosophy. See how it cuts right through that? It's a good trimmer, except, I've mentioned this before, when you want to measure anything under an inch, you have no guidelines here. And it's really awkward to use. So I, that's why I have that other trimmer. If I want to measure anything an inch or under, you know, if I want to do three quarters of an inch or even an inch or an inch and a half, those smaller measurements are really awkward on this thing. So, so seven and a quarter by four and three quarters. Now notice how I did the seven and a quarter inch. Maybe I'm giving too much detail, but notice how I did the seven and a quarter inch first. So that way I only have to use one piece of chipboard. So I'm just going to turn it. And I try to do that as much as possible so I don't waste supplies and end up with, with a bunch of scraps. And then we'll use this piece for the spine. And I think I'll just use, I'll just do a one inch spine, I think. Let's see. Maybe, let me measure this because I really like this. That's one and a quarter. Let's see if I can do one and a quarter on here. Kind of. 
one and a quarter, I think it's right there. Okay, and I will save this for another journal and I'll save this, I save everything. Who else is here besides Ellen? Say hi. So I can say hi back. Okay, let's vote. Blue or eggplant for the outside cover. Leslie Spears. Hi, Leslie. And then a third person just joined us. Would love for you to say hi. Okay, let's vote. I'm going for the blue with the eggplant on the inside. But what do you guys think? Look, I noticed that at the bottom here, this is not good because my belly sticks out. <laughs> when I press up against my desk, my belly goes boom. <laughs> it's not flattering. <laughs> Leslie votes for the blue. Yay. How about you, Ellen, and mystery person? Well, I get some Tyvex out. Do, 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 do. Look at this. I already have a piece that measures perfectly. It's okay. We all have that condition. <laughs> You're so kind, Leslie. <laughs> I didn't have this condition till menopause. <laughs> I always had a nice flat tummy. People thought like I was an aerobics instructor. But no, that was the first thing to go was my tummy. It's okay. All right. Leslie and I have decided on the blue. So my... Got our covers, our spine. You didn't have it till you retired. Oh boy. I can't retire. I'd be at the refrigerator constantly. I do stand in my craft room. I have a standing desk, which makes me feel like I'm kind of exercising. <laughs> Ellen votes blue. Okay, blue it is. Okay, so my spine is seven and a quarter by one and a quarter. And I have a piece of Tyvek here, which is um, seven and a quarter by three. This is a brown piece, but you don't need a brown. I recycle shipping envelopes. These work perfectly. You can also buy the shipping envelopes, but I ship enough things that um, and receive enough supplies that I just recycle recycle these. Some people use scrapbook paper. Um, I bet you could use wallpaper too. Um, but again, I don't use scrapbook paper because I just feel that that's not, I don't trust it. You want this part of your book to be really sturdy. I'm using score tape, but you can use any adhesive that you prefer. Now, when I cover this, one thing I'm going to show you is a little trick I learned about making your edges perfect. Really nice when you fold your paper over. I haven't seen anybody else do this. I've seen um, people do it kind of the complicated way where you might end up with corners that aren't nice. But I have a little trick about that that I discovered recently because I was always having trouble with my corners. Leslie, did you buy my this and that um, kit? Who was that that bought, bought my kit? And it was so pretty. And they were so excited and so, so nice about it. I just loved seeing their excitement. Was that you? Okay, then I'm just going to eyeball this and put it in the center. Okay, burnish. Now 
Now, here's another little tip. Not sure I seem to buy a lot sometimes. <laughs> I think you bought something from my shop, the Scrapologist, because your name looks really familiar. Or maybe from the Facebook, the Papercraft Fan Club Facebook group. I know I've talked to you before. Okay, this little tip. Now, people are always saying, oh, go at an eighth of an inch, go at a quarter of an inch, or just eyeball it. Here's the thing. Here's how you determine how much of a gusset you want between the spine and your covers. When you close your book, this chipboard here is going to fold up like this. So um, you need at least the width of your cover. That's all you need. You need at least that, but you don't need more. So this is about an eighth of an inch. So that's what I'm going to going to do. So that's how you determine how much space you need between your spine and your cover. And people make it so complicated. So just take your chipboard. You can even do this. You can take your chipboard. Where's a pen? And draw a line. And that's where your that's your gusset. But I'm going to go ahead and Do an eighth of an inch here. And I just draw a line. Whoops, I did a quarter of an inch there. I'm so used to doing a quarter of an inch for my mini albums. Okay. Then we're just going to put more tape on. In general, you want for your Tyvek. You want at about an inch to an inch and a half wider on each side than your spine so that the, you can put enough tape on to get a really good grip. And I need some quarter of an inch tape there. Normally, I would have made this a little wider, but this piece already fit. So, whoopsie. So I didn't really worry about it. So is anybody working on anything exciting? And then just line it up. Do you shop a lot on Etsy, Leslie? My first TN, a Christmas one. What's a TN? TN. Always burnish and just make sure it's on there good. Oh, Traveler's Notebook. Yeah, those are fun, aren't they? I love the size of them. You should go over to Papercraft Fan Club and post a picture of it. I love seeing pictures of what people are working on. Okay, so we're going with the blue. So I'm going to cut this after. Well, no, actually. It's got a nice border here and there and there. So I'll just go ahead and cut this at about... eight and a half and this goes right in the paper trimmer cuts really easily make sure I'm cutting the right side yeah see how this is not cut evenly let's see I want to even this up a little bit
Yeah, TN is a traveler's notebook. That's kind of more of a junk journal thing, I think. They're really neat. And they're a specific size too, right, Leslie? They're kind of smaller so you can fit them in your purse. Ooh, it's stuck down in there. Come here. Come here. Well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to remain stuck. Okay. So it was eight and a half this way. Now that my edges are nice and even. Mm, I think I want to cut the top off. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so I ended up cutting this wallpaper at 12 and a quarter by eight and a half. I have to get a new ruler because this Tim Holtz ruler, after a while, the, um, the metal is coming out of here, right here that's coming out, and um, the letters are all wearing off. It's not a real durable ruler. Okay, and then I'm going to put tape on here, but again, you can use whatever adhesive you want. A lot of people use, this is the glue that I use, Aline's Tacky Glue. This works really well and holds very well when I have to use glue. I'm glad my microphone is holding up. This tape comes in really wide sheets where you can just boop right across the book. But I don't know. Just, it's very expensive. It's probably just as expensive to do it like this way <laughs> in the long run, but I don't know. Oh, yes, you love your glossy accents. We have to figure out if we can get that anymore. Ellen is my mom, everybody. She contributes a lot of really nice things in my shop. If you go to my shop, she makes... Um, well, let me show you something that I haven't put it in the shop yet. Let's see. But this is just one example. There's a couple of these in there, but this is, um, this goes, it's um, junk journal, scrapbook jewelry, or bangles, whatever you want to call them, but these can go on your spine. She's a jewelry maker, so she made some of these, and she has a little free gift in there. And then there's another one that's, wow, so impressive. I just have to... I just have to find the time, but look at this one. This is where I got my craftiness from, is my mother. She's the original. I'm just the... <laughs> look at that. For a closure, can you imagine? Or hanging off the side of your book. It's got an old key, all kinds of different keys and beads. And it says, believe here. I mean, oh, she does really nice work. So she helps get some stuff into my shop. You should go check it out. I think there's one in there still. 
Uh, most of them sold, but oops, her little gift. There's one in there, I think, that's got a little looking glass on it. And some other things, real vintage looking. They're just beautiful. So thanks, Ellen Mom, for passing on your creative side to me. Glad I don't take after Dad in that regard. <laughs> We love him, but he is not artsy. All right, let's just set this in the center as much as we can. Burnish it. Okay. Now I'm going to fold over the edges and cover this, and I'm going to show you a trick to that. But first, let me just get my tape down. I like this because I can burnish as I go along, and it also gives me a nice straight straight cut on my tape. I burnish and then cut. Kind of have a system down after doing 20 gazillion of these. You know, we all get our little, our own system down. Okay, so here's my little trick. So what a lot of people do is just fold and fold, but then you're not left with a nice clean corner. What a lot of people do, what most people do, what I've seen is you use something like this perfect trim ruler is really nice and you go like this and then you miter. But still I found sometimes when I do that, I'm left with a gap here, like I mitered too close or didn't miter correctly. So here's my little trick. I do the side first, and I like to press like this and kind of fold it up against the chipboard so you have a nice clean edge, and then fold it over. And again, you can totally use glue for this. I did. For this one, I used glue. I was just experimenting, and it's staying on there perfectly. The edges are just as beautiful as could be, so glue is fine. Okay. Now what you do is pull this off just a little bit on the edge and miter. So instead of just mitering like this, you've already folded it over. Okay. Actually, actually just keep it folded over. Let's try that. I bet that would be even better. See, I've made hundreds of these and I just discovered this little trick yesterday because I was sick of not having perfect corners. So let's miter. There we go. Okay. Then, yes, that's going to work. Then you just push this little piece in so that it's up against the edge of the chipboard and then you fold it over and you have a perfect edge. See, if you don't do that, let me just do one the way most people do it. And I'll show you. I mean, it can be done this way. So we're just going to miter first. And then you fold this over. But what you have to do first is you have excess right here. So you have to take that and kind of push it in a little bit and keep working with it until, Oop. <laughs> you know what? I've been crafting so much and getting so many orders out. Look how swollen my hand is. <laughs> I really should stop, but I don't want to. So I'm not gripping very well. So anyway, I don't know if you can really see that, but can you see the way, let me see, the way I kind of had to push in this piece here. And then when I fold it over, it it's kind of folded over, but it's just not as nice. 
and it's not as perfect as what you get when you do it this other way. So you can even cut this little piece off because sometimes when you fold it over, you're going to get a little white there. So let's even just cut that off a little bit. And let's do it one more time. So we fold it over the short side and we're going to miter after we fold it over the short side. there. Whoops, I didn't press hard enough. Let me try again. Okay, and then I'm just going to cut this piece off. Okay, and then let's do this side. I always do the short sides first. Oh, thank you, Leslie. I, I've been making these mini albums for years. I just looked at my shop the other day. I have sold 247 mini albums. And I just figured this out yesterday. And I did it by accident. Isn't that awesome the way that happens sometimes? You make a mistake and it's not really a mistake. Okay. So let's fold that over. Miter. Oh, that's right. I already did this one kind of. Let's see. Now I can pull that piece back out and trim it up a little. There we go. What is that saying? There are, in, in art, there are no mistakes. There are only happy something. Happy what? I can't remember how that goes. There are no mistakes. There are only happy... Happy discoveries? I don't know. I'm making that up. I don't remember what the real saying is. Okay, now we can take our long pieces off. Oh, let me cut these little thingies. Okay, good. And I didn't miter that quite perfectly or cut it off perfectly. Let me fix it. There we go. Okay, when I'm doing the long end, I like to... You know what? My new discovery isn't perfect. You, I guess sometimes you have to trim a little bit and make sure that excess piece is pushed in. But I like to make sure that it's all nice and kind of train the paper a little bit. And then I pull and work from the center over to the edges. And yes, I mean, that corner is perfect. Perfect every time. Yay. These corners have been my nemesis. Happy accidents. Yes, there are no mistakes in art. There are only happy accidents. This is the one that I did the old way, so I do have to push that in. And I'm going to go ahead and just push that down so much easier than kind of crinkling it in first. Just push it down and train my paper. There. Then I like to just give it an extra burnish just to make sure it's just the perfectionist in me. Just to make sure all my edges are nice and clean. And burnish here as well. Throw that away. Okay. Oh, look. I love it. I love, love, love it. I might have to put something. This might look nice with something decoupaged on the front here. I don't know. But see how perfect your spine is? And it just looks so professional. And, of course, we love our new way of making corners. Yay. All right. So now we have this other piece that we're going to put on the inside. And I like to leave about a quarter of an inch edge so that, you know, so that you've got this all around. I just think it looks pretty. 
instead of just covering the whole inside. So we're going to do this inside piece at 10 and 3 quarters by 7. And I think we're going to go 7 this way. Okay. 10 and 3 quarters this way. Watch how easy this boop, cuts wallpaper. I seven. Okay. Now these, because I'm going to be putting this on here. Um, these are kind of meant to be, um, what is it called? The hidden, the hidden, um, I've seen tutorials on it. Um, the hidden spine or something where you sew, let's see, I'm not going to be able to do a whole tutorial on this, but where you sew your signatures onto a piece of cardstock or something like that and then glue it glue that on to here instead of sewing your signatures through the spine you can still do that with these and it will show your stitching but um these would look really nice if you do the hidden spine technique actually you can do both you can do both or if you're making a mini album, go ahead and just put your hinges on and then attach your pages. You can do you can do all three of those things with these covers. But I'm thinking what I should do for this is put a piece of ribbon in first. I'm going to do that. Okay, hang on guys, I'm going to get a piece of ribbon. This one looks really nice with that. I'll go for that. The colors look totally look different over on the other side of the room. Okay, it would help if I put my microphone back on before I talk to you. <laughs> I'm so used to being up in my craft room talking to myself, and I'm like, whatever. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think that will look nice. That's a nice shade of blue. So we're going to put this at about, I'm just eyeballing it. This is about 12. About 22 inches, 22 inches long. And what I like to do just to hold it in place is just put a piece of my Scorpel tape. Don't have to do this, but I just find it easier to put on the piece of paper if this is adhered already. Pull it taut so it's kind of straight. And there we go. And then let's put this on. Actually, I'm going to ink the edges first. Where's my ink pad? I always have it right in front of me. That's weird. Mm, oh, my junk journal is blocking it. This is my idea book. Everybody should have one of these in their craft room. And then every time you have an idea, you just jot it down because you have to, you have to write them down, at least I do, when they come to me or I will forget them. And if you watch me, you know this is 
Tim Holtz vintage photo. It's what I use for everything. I, I'm not a big color person, but you could use any color you want on here, but it just gets rid of that white edge. Let me put this away. Put this away too. I need to clear up a little bit. I can't work. I will get stressed. So here's the other cool thing too, is this wallpaper is washable. So if you spill something on the cover, maybe you can wash it off. I think I need an idea book or I need to bind up all the scraps of paper I've got with ideas on them. I have volumes, yeah. Yeah, take your scraps of paper. Let's see if I have one. I have another little idea book here too. And I have little things that, let's see. I have little things that I did, I wrote little things on and I just stuff them in here. Cause sometimes I have an idea and I'm in bed or, you know, I'm not at home. And then I tape or stuff the idea into my, into my junk journal or stick it in a pocket in there. And that's kind of fun too. So yeah, get them in there. It's fun to go through a year later and say, oh, I accomplished that one. You can check them off. Again, you don't have to use the tape on this. You can use glue if you so prefer. If glue is not your enemy like me. <laughs> You know, the other thing about this hand is I have a tear in my rotator cuff in my right shoulder. And so my hand is numb all night long. And then I craft all day. It's not good. One of these days I'm going to have to give it a rest. Okay, let's put this on. So beautiful. And there's a little bit of a line here where the ribbon is, but that's okay because you're probably on the cover, you might be putting a pocket here or, you know, I mean, I think it's completely okay. Okay. There we have it. Then I do like to train it a little bit, not too hard, with my bone folder before I completely open it. It's not as crucial with this wallpaper. This wallpaper is just wonderful to work with. You don't have to worry about the paper tearing. I love it. And there's the cover for my next This and That kit. What do you guys think? Are you gonna try some wallpaper? Look at the inside. So if you decide to, well, this paper's too big, but if you decide to make that into a junk journal, it would be, this looks really pretty with tea stain paper, but it would also look beautiful with scrapbook paper. And I love the size of this. That's what I like about my idea book. And there's just something about this size that um, just fits nicely in your hand and just, I like it. So there, so cover, cover, and I love the inside of this one. And then you can just make a real quick little folder, stuff some pages in there if you want, you can round your corners. And there we go, wallpaper. Wallpaper, yes or no? I vote yes. If you can get your hands on it. There are some people in Etsy, I, I noticed that 
sell wallpaper packs. So that might be an idea for you if you can't get a hold of wallpaper. Oh, you like this one the most? Thank you, Leslie. Yeah, I think this is kind of fun. I think I'm going to sew this up and put it in my shop. But I was thinking um, of not decorating it. Just having this be blank so that it's not a theme and people can use it for whatever they want. My shop is the Scrapologist on Etsy. The Scrapologist. So, okay. So... If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate a subscription and some thumbs up and any little like hearts or face little things you can give. Always help my shop, uh, my YouTube channel be seen. I would really appreciate sending me some love and it's been fun. Thank you, Ellen. <laughs> it's been fun um, having some people to scrap with today. I think I should do the live ones more often. Now that I know that my micro microphone is working. Yes, I knew that you had bought something from me, if not several things from me, Leslie. That's what, how I knew your name. <laughs> and thank you for being a subscriber. So actually, I think you bought some of mom's stuff. So, okay. That's, the video is about an hour. So I think this is a good time to say goodbye. And thank you, Leslie. And I hope that I see you guys soon. Come on over to the Papercraft Fan Club or to my Scrapologist Facebook page and say hi, too, so we can keep in touch. Okay? Have a wonderful week. Bye.